Hello everyone, it is Crystal Rawls and it is late so I don't want to come live and wake you up or you know keep you stirred. You know this will be here if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, if you're awake, it you know won't disturb you, your, your sleep time. You can catch this when you wake up or right before you go to bed. Um, but listen, I'm sorry for the delay. Um, it is the hot spot. I'm going to have to get a device. So let's go ahead and get into my reason for coming. It is 11.14 p.m. It is not 12 a.m. And it is 5.17.2020. It's still Sunday. So let's go ahead and get into our word for today. Um, our word is coming from Exodus chapter 8 and we'll be reading from the NLT version the New Living Translation of the Holy Bible it is an exciting version let's go ahead and I'm actually reading from the Africa Bible study app that means I get pics illustrations breakdowns commentaries all of that delicious stuff so um, let's go ahead and get into it I have my music which is the journey to Egypt on iTunes. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get into the word for this night. The plague of frogs. Then the Lord said to Moses, go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across your entire land. The river now will swarm with frogs and into your palace, even into your bedroom and onto your bed. They will enter the houses of your officials and your people. They will even jump into your ovens and your kneading bowls. Frogs will jump on you, your people, and all your officials. All of your prominent people will be displaying frog, frog couture. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, raise the staff in your hand over all the rivers, canals, and ponds of Egypt and bring up frogs all over the land. I cannot raise my volume too high because of the time. So Aaron raised his hand over the waters of Egypt and frogs came up and covered the whole land. But the magicians were able to do the same thing with their magic. Oh, they were able to help Moses out, thank you. They too caused frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. Aha. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses, Moses and Aaron and begged, plead with the Lord to take the frogs away from my people. Okay, I'll repeat that line. Thank you. It is important. We have a disruption. I'll read it again. Plead with the Lord to take away the frogs from me and my people. I will let your people go so that you can offer sacrifices to the Lord. You set the time, Moses replied. Tell me when you want me to pray for you and your officials and your people. Then you and your houses will be rid of the frogs. They will remain only in the Nile River where they belong. Do it tomorrow, Pharaoh said. All right, Moses replied, it will be as you have said. Then you will know that there is none like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials and your people. They will remain only in their Nile River, their natural habitat, the Nile River. So Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh's palace. And Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had inflicted on Pharaoh. And the Lord did just what Moses had predicted. The frogs in the houses, the courtyards, 
and the fields all died. The Egyptians piled them into great heaps and terrible, in a terrible stench filled the land. But when Pharaoh saw that the relief had come, he became stubborn again. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. <clears throat> well, he has relief now, so nothing, no, no need to worry anymore. The frogs are gone. The plague of gnats, as you know them to be gnats. So the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, raise your staff, okay, and strike the ground. The dust will turn into swarms of gnats throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. When Aaron raised his hand and struck the ground with his staff, gnats infested the entire land, covering the covering the Egyptians and their animals. <sighs> All the dust in the land of Egypt turned into gnats. Pharaoh's magicians tried to do the same thing with their secret arts, but this time they failed. And the gnats covered everyone, people and animals alike. Hmm. This is the finger of God, magicians exclaimed to Pharaoh. We can no longer imitate this great work. I said that. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He wouldn't listen to them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just as the Lord had predicted. The plague of flies. Then the Lord told Moses, Get up early in the morning and stand in Pharaoh's way as he goes down to the river again. Say to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so they can worship me. If you will refuse, then I will send swarms of flies on you, your officials, your people, and all your houses. Hmm. The Egyptian homes will be filled with flies and the ground will be covered with them. Ew. But this time I will spare the region of Goshen. That's where his people were, where my people live. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord and that I am present even in the heart of the land, your land. Excuse me. I am present even in the heart of your land. I will make a clear distinction, a clear distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will happen on tomorrow. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And the Lord did just as he had said. A thick swarm of flies filled Pharaoh's palace. Whew, flies are so annoying. And the houses of his officials, the whole land of Egypt was thrown into chaos. A lot of flies. Go oh, and tell the Pharaoh to let them people go. The Israelites, the dirt of flies. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. All right, go ahead. And offer sacrifices to your God. He said, but do it here in this land. Hmm? But Moses replied, that wouldn't be right. The Egyptians detest the sacrifices that we offer to the Lord our God. They will give us a hard time. Look, if we offer our sacrifices here, where the Egyptians can see us, they will stone us. We must make a three-day trip into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, just as he commanded us. All right, go ahead, Pharaoh replied. I will let you go into the wilderness to offer sacrifice to the Lord your God, but don't go too far away. Now hurry and pray for me. Moses answered, as soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the swarm of flies will disappear from you and your officials and all the people, all your people. But I'm warning you, Pharaoh, don't lie to us again now. God is listening and refused to let the people go to sacrifice unto the Lord their God. So Moses left Pharaoh's palace and pleaded with the Lord to remove all of those flies. 
And the Lord did as Moses asked and caused the swarms of flies to disappear from Pharaoh, his officials, and his people. But not a single fly remained. But Pharaoh again became stubborn and refused to let the people go. And that concludes our scripture reading today. We were reading from Exodus chapter 8 of the NLT version of the Holy Bible. And the time is now 11.24 p.m. I want to go ahead and do my commentating and summarizing. You've gotten your message for today. You are welcome to carry on with me. So what we learned here is that every time the Lord has to make a command he gives, he asks first, need you to do something for me. I need you to let my people go. If you do not, I'm going to send a plague among you. I will not. I will send a plague, as I said I would. The first one, what was the first plague? It was the gnats, and then it was the, no, the frogs, the gnats, and then the flies. Listen. The frogs, he got rid of the frogs for him. Pharaoh asked him to please pray that the frogs go away. Okay, I pray they'll go away. They went away. Gnats came. They couldn't stand the gnats. Please pray that the gnats go away. All right, I pray. Then he sent the flies. Because each and every time, the Pharaoh goes back on what he said. This time he said, I'm going to let you go. After the flies, because they can't. The flies is just nasty, y'all. They so annoying. Pit, no, can't nobody stay in flies. Flies mean something is rotten. And so I'm wondering if there's like a meaning behind all of this. And I may just look that up. What are gnats attracted to? What are frogs like attracted to? What? Because we know flies. Oh, flies look for remain leftover food. Flies just. They, they'll, they'll land on a good on a good on a good piece of meat okay but anyways and flies leave behind flies create more flies okay i don't want to get into all that nasty stuff but uh pharaoh has finally said he's gonna let them go but we're gonna see how he behaves on tomorrow if he's truly gonna let his people his captivity that was been cat has been captive under his control free can he just let them go he's been stubborn and god has touched his heart and hardened his heart as before but it ain't saying he's doing nothing right now and another thing we notice that these plagues have it sounds like they hit the people of israel too up until was it the last plague the flies um, so that the people of Israel will fear God too. That's what I think. I mean, they could see the blood. They could see the frogs. They could see the gnats and the flies. No, we're not going to do the flies. We're just not going to do that, okay? <laughs> so he, he separated the people from Goshen. Remember, that's where Jacob's children live. Um, Rachel and Leah, Jacob's wives, who are all deceased at this point. But that's where their offspring, their descendants lived. And that's that land that Joseph had provided for them under the other under the uh the original Pharaoh, the old Pharaoh, the kind one. So these new Pharaohs are not recognizing the work that Joseph did to save the people of Egypt. They're just not recognizing it. They're not giving him honor this due. Listen, when you when you have people of God and you have people of the world, um, people of the world, what the, what the Bible says is that the world will hate you because you're not of the world. You are in it, but you're not of it. So since you're not going to do just any and everything, you know, you're not going to be like the world. And so the world will hate or despise you. Because you ain't carrying on with them. And so that's just something that I wanted to point out. Was that could be, could have been the reason. Was they just didn't go along with, with Egyptian um, custom. or Like they couldn't worship God. 
They couldn't offer sacrifices there in the land. I don't know where they did this stuff now. But <clears throat> they even said, if we offer sacrifices, they'll stone us. But that's just not their way of doing things. <sighs> I wonder what these people did all this time. Had they not been doing their usual sacrifices? What have we read that they did? So, yeah. It's important to just keep people in prayer, y'all. Because these people were held captive. These people were literally... They were literally cap held captive by the Egyptians. They were their slaves. They had become their slaves. Um, it looks like after Joseph died and the new Pharaoh was set up, and that there was just a distinction. It was just like, hey, tell you what, y'all gonna do some hard labor. It's a no king in town, and I ain't having it. Okay, y'all ain't gonna just be up here and not do no work. And then they may work harder on them. And so God had to raise up Moses, had to hide him and, 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 and prepare him to lead these people out of captivity. Moses lived in the royal palace. He was a Hebrew himself, an Israelite of, the, of that lineage, but he was hidden. He was a hidden baby boy because he was meant to lead these people, these very people that he was born out of out of captivity but he had to be hidden the key word here is hidden he was hidden amongst the reefs by his mother and his sister he was then hidden in the palace he was then hidden in the land of Midian where he ran until that king who sought his life died you know, after he killed somebody who was you know beating on another one of the Hebrews as they were working he got mad kill him he Buried him in the sand. And then they was like, Hebrews, the Hebrews is the one that called him out. They was like, hey, sir, ain't you the one that um killed all that, killed that dude? It's like, and then just like, ain't nothing happened. He was like, he took off running, and the king heard about it. And then the king was like, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to get this dude right here. And so he went and hid until the Lord called him out of hiding. It was like, it's time for you to go leave, leave my people. It's time for you to go back home. And, um, and get these people out of here. And he could do this. You know, he lived in the palace. He knew what royalty was like. He knew the customs. You know, he he comes from that lineage of um, Joseph. You know, that is his family. So, hey, it's your time. And tomorrow, we're going to see how the Lord does a great deliverance. The story will continue. I don't think it's the, the big finale of the freedom but we will see what the lord is going to do and his further instructions i believe he's going to i'm what i think is going to happen is there's the israelites are going to get some special instructions because even god his time be like okay it's about time so y'all get ready um so Moses is gone to warn the king, you can let us go in peace so we can do this the hard way. So I don't want y'all being like, you know, God ain't, God ain't fair. He ain't give, he ain't give, he just, he just, whatever he, you about to see him do. No, nope. warning after warning after warning after warning. These are my people. These are not your people. You're going to let them go. I asked you, I asked you to cooperate with me. You didn't want to let them go. So that, so that, so, so. We're going to have to do this the whole right way. All right, I'm going to just stop it right there. And again, I want to say something. Help me, Holy Ghost. I, I don't. There are some topics in here that uh, we'll be talking about killing and all of this. In this this age and time, um, things, the, things were done a bit differently. As you can see, it was it was a crime, and so what Joseph, excuse me, Moses Moses did when he slew that Egyptian, okay, who was watching over the Israelites as they were, he was wrong for that. So he had to pay by going into hiding. Further on down the line, we'll learn about how God deals with people who accidentally or on purpose does such a thing there are rules and laws that will be set up 
to judge these people as a, accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and close with this. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you so much for joining me for another broadcast of eating the holy bible eating the words of god reading and studying with me tonight before you go to sleep all right y'all have a good night bye